And then I read the script, and I thought the first act really terrified me. But by the times we got to act two and three uh, in, the, in the script, I was like, well, he's really taking us on an adventure that is quite exciting. It's, 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 he's going in, I call him, I call Tom Gormick in, in this production the mind because it really is his fantasy, if you will, you know, uh, culminating from whatever the perception has been in the media, the internet, um, you know, whatever blips in my life that have occurred that have gone public as, as a result of being in the public eye, and some sense of knowledge of my interviews and the things that interested me in this path. And um, that that spoke to me, and it was like a fantasy, a fantasy of Tom Cormican's interpretation of what my life would be like. It's completely fictional. It, it is not me. Um, there's some there's some elements that that are truthful, but but it is a fictionalized, surrealistic, abstract, comical account of a week in. And I hate saying my name like this, but Nicolas Cage's life. <laughs> I also want to offer that I had a great cast. I, I really enjoyed working with Pedro. You, you couldn't work with a nicer man. And, and I thought he brought something quite amusing to the character. Pedro, as Javi, has a, uh, a very unique sense of humor. <laughs> he would... He would he would make jokes about cabbage, uh, lettuce patches in, in the field in, in Budapest. And I'm like, is that really your version of comedy, <laughs> your, your humor? And it's just, it is funny because it's, no one finds it funny. And, but his character, he was, I think he was a little method. He was playing a character that would find that amusing. Well, Javi is, you know, a, a particular creation uh, of Tom's and, and Kevin's in that um, I think he's a, an aspiring artist and um, and uh, and is, is, is searching for that and, and has been you know really uh, shaping uh, his love of cinema and storytelling um, through Nicolas Cage's performances in his movies and so um, it's just a, a beautiful thing that lives in contrast in, in such a funny way to, to what the world thinks he is, when really he's just kind of a, 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 an, an, an average aspiring artist and a psychotic superfan. I would never have imagined that I would ever actually, you know, meet one of my heroes. Um, whether I liked it or not, he, I saw his movies more than I saw other people's movies, you know? And, um, and, and so, so, so I don't know how to describe what it was like in terms of, um, you know, b b being here and having this experience because, you know, on the first day of, of shooting, and, you know, saying action, and then I'm in a scene with Nicolas Cage, you know? And it, I, I know how sycophantic it sounds, but it's the way it is. But yes, my scenes are all with, with, with Pedro, Pascal, with, with Javi. Um, and I'm so pleased and glad that I'm playing and acting with him. It's such an amazing gift for an actor. Uh, he is uh, a generous uh, human being and actor as well. It's, um, it's really present. And uh, I have to say, like, all of the actors on this movie are amazing to work with. There is. Uh, uh, is a really good uh, team working on set, and um, and Pedro is just uh, it's just so spontaneous, so real, so honest, and and yeah, I mean, I've been really really lucky, and I think he's he's doing a really good job. I mean, we know Pedro Pascal uh, probably for all those. Uh, uh, gangster movies, or he's always like a villain, he's always like a bad guy, and, and here is actually a lovely, lovely, lovely piece of cake. <laughs>
Well, I think it was such an amazing gift to work with Nicolas Cage, calling Nicolas Cage. That was the, the tricky part of the old movie, that you were calling him Nick, and so you wanted to call Javi Pedro. I mean, like, why, why I don't have to call you Pedro if I call Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage? So it, it was like super, super freaky. <laughs> and this is what Nick said as well. It's like, it's... It's weird, you're kind of like feeling that you are outside the scene, but you are inside the scene. It's weird, but really interesting. Tom and Kevin are just such brilliant creatives. They're just constantly in cahoots, like giggling behind the uh, video village, watching playback, constantly throwing you curve balls, asking you to deliver it in different ways, uh, finding the funny in it, which they don't really need to do often because, like I said, it's it's all there on the page. Um, they're brilliant creatives and such a great team as well. They really complement each other. Um, and yeah, Kevin, after Tom got COVID, Kevin really picked up the slack and started directing uh, but by proxy through Tom, who was zooming in. It was like this weird, crazy Orwellian experience where Tom was like in this iPad, like, giving you direction from his bedroom. Um, <laughs> that was a first for sure. You know, like a lot of people, I idolised Nick and saw all of his movies, so when I finally got to meet him, he most certainly didn't, didn't disappoint. He's kind, caring, intelligent, uh, generous, and uh, just such a pro and highly skilled at what he does. I mean, it's just clear when you see him performing and uh, the way he composes himself on set he, it's just he's a, he's a master at, at what you know he does in his arena um, I just the, the, the one thing which I take from him is his freedom is and also his preparation like a lot of people don't know this but he preps so hard probably the hardest out of anybody that I've had the privilege to work with He's uh, a real, you know, student, a continuous student of, of film and the filmmaking process. And to see that, you know, through his long and illustrious career, he, that fire is burning bright as ever, is nothing short of inspiring, man. He's, he's, he's incredible. I think she's, she's very relatable to me, but she's also, like I said, like, I think she's very relatable in general. Um, She's young and, and she has these parents that she doesn't really understand and, and they don't really understand her. Um, and it's such a like pinnacle, a crucial age being 16. It's like, it's so specific um, because you, you're changing a lot, but you've also got a very, you kind of already know who you are um, and feel very protective over that. And I think that what I thought was cool was how Nick sort of, you know, openly disapproves of the fact that she's not knowledgeable about all the things that he's knowledgeable about. you know it's and I, I always find that annoying when adults kind of say you know you haven't heard of Led Zeppelin you haven't heard of Van Halen it's like I why would I I don't care I'm 16 I care about a lot of other stuff so I think it was nice she's very sensitive and I I wanted to show you know from the script what what read to me was that she has all this anger and and hurt from being looked over and neglected by her dad um, but at the same time, there's like all this love and it, it's, it's ultimately, she just wants him to love her for who she is instead of being forced to become this like mini Nick Cage. I have loved working with Nick. I was so excited. It was the thing I was the most looking forward to. I was telling everyone like I couldn't wait and completely exceeded my expectations. He's fantastic to work with. He's like super, super caring, patient, very professional, very respectful. Um, and for my first movie as well, it was so rewarding and it was really helpful to see him work because he's so on top of everything. He knows exactly what he wants to do. He knows all his lines. He's on set ready to work. He's so patient. He was very patient with me um, because there was so much I needed to ask him a lot of questions. Like I, I asked him, I remember, I was like, Nick, can I ask you a question? He's like, yes, of course. I said, what's a best boy? He was like, oh, a best boy, that's a grip. Like some random question, nothing to do with acting. Um, but he really put up with me and we had like a lot of really nice conversations, I thought, anyway. Tom and I had worked on a show together and the show ended 
and he said, I have a kernel, I have an idea, a kernel of an idea, and the, you know, the, the premise of like Nick Cage playing Nick Cage. And I was like, as soon as he said it, I remember where I was, we were walking around a lot, and I was like, I'm in. I, yes, absolutely, 100%, let's do it. So as soon as that ended, we, we basically just started taking walks and hikes and fleshing out the story and the tone. The guy did not drop a single line. He never flubbed a line. He, we had a table read you know, a week before the shoot and he was completely off book and he had so much dialogue. Um, it was like he had, and he had, he had worked out so much of you know, what he wanted to do or he always had a take on the scene. There was no movie without Nicolas Cage being on board, that is for sure. And then, you know, it was about finding the correct uh, Javi, you know, finding, uh, and, and, you know, when we met Pedro Pascal, he came and he said, I, you know, I, he hasn't really done much comedy before, but he was like, I'm a huge Nicolas Cage fan. And so there was so much of the Javi character in Pedro that it was sort of undeniable. We had to, we had to, and I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his. And um, the characters that he plays or has played in the past uh, seem to be the sort of macho, like, you know, action driven characters. They're real like men. And uh, seeing him sort of be a, be a giant super fan and sweetly talk about what Nick has meant to him, uh, started to really solidify for us exactly who the hobby character would be. First of all, I'll, I'll address the mind kind of thing. Nick, Nick calls us the mind, like calls me the mind and calls Kevin the penultimate mind because he was like, he was a, uh, we tend to analyze and potentially overthink things. And I think what was interesting is so does Nick. And so when we come up, he'd know he was about to engage in like sort of an intellectualization of the scene, which, you know, when you're directing, you want to talk more about how it's, how it's feeling or, you know, or, or what we can do to make it better. And so he would be smiling when he said that. And he was like, oh God, they want me to say some more words, you know, and he would be thinking about it and he'd be like, here comes the mind. What are you thinking about? What now? And you know, what was, what we found was that we were always interested in making it better, and so was Nick. And I think he found a way to sort of have fun with that with both of us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.